Hey everybody, I'm Corey. I'm Laquita Marie. And together we're teaching artists and co-founders of Atun Pond Entertainment, community partners with the Virginia Stage Company's Public Works Program. Today we're here to take you on a journey to tell you one of our favorite stories. It's a fractured version of a Rudyard Kipling story called The Elephant's Child. We're also going to talk to you about what it means to be careful about getting information from online sources, what cyberbullying is, and what you can do if you think that you're being cyberbullied. Today's story about Nosy the Elephant is all about knowing who and where to find reliable sources. Now, and when you're looking for information, there's a primary source and there's a secondary source. A primary source of information would be an experience that you've had firsthand. Let's say, for example, we, I'm a music teacher. So if, you're te if I'm teaching you about musical instruments that we're playing, then that's a, I'm a primary source to you and your experience is a primary source. Oh, in the same way that in our dance theater class, if we're teaching theater techniques, we are a primary source for our students. And their experience with us is a, makes them a primary, their experience becomes a primary source for them as well. Now in this story that we're gonna share with you today, Nosy the Elephant and how the elephant got his trunk, Nosy has a few sources of information. He has his mother and his elephant aunties and uncles that he asks lots of questions to. And then he has a secondary source of information that doesn't end up so well in the ah, crocodile when he tries to find the hippopotamuses to take to form his animal band. So let's see what happens to Nosy in today's story adventure called Nosy the Elephant and how the elephant got his trunk. Don't forget, please like and subscribe and also hit the thumbs up button and let us know who some of your most trusted sources of information might be. Might, maybe it's a teacher, maybe it's your parents. Where do you get your information, especially in today's environment when we're online? Atupan Edutainment uses lots of different folklore, stories from around the world to teach a lot of different things. Today we're going to use a different version of Rudyard Kipling's The Elephant's Child that we call Nosy the Elephant and how the elephant got his trunk to show that it's okay to be curious as long as you ask questions from the right people. So Laquita Marie, are you ready to help me out with your music? Sure, how else will we help you out in the story? You'll also help me out whenever I say the words Mr. Owl said, hoo hoo, they all shall say, Ah, tweet tweet. Let's show them how it goes. Mr. Owl said, hoo hoo. Ah, tweet tweet. Mr. Owl said, hoo hoo. Ah, tweet tweet. So let's begin the journey of Nosy the Elephant and how the elephant got its trunk. Long ago on the Great Plains of Africa, there once was a time when the mighty elephant herd looked a lot different than they do today. They still had big floppy ears, long sharp tusks, and gigantic bodies. But they didn't have long trunks like they do now to go Instead they had little short noses and when they spoke they said Nosy the elephant was a baby elephant. And Nosy was always asking lots of questions from his elephant aunties and uncles and his mother. He would say, bah, 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 why is the sky blue? Or, bah, 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 do I have to eat this grass for supper? Or, bah, 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 do I have to go to bed at sunset? One day after all of his questions, Nosy's mother said, bah, 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 and told him to go play. Nosy trotted off into the forest where he heard a sound he had never heard before. He peeked his nosy little nose through the bushes, and there he saw Mr. Owl, his backup singers, the Colocolo Birds, and the animal band getting ready for the Savannah Talent Show. The hippopotamus was there stomping her foot to keep the rhythm. Stomp with me. The gorilla pounded his chest. And Mr. Owl said, sound the animal band was making and he ran right into their practice but mr owl had no time for nosy baby elephants and he shooed nosy away nosy stomped off never had such language been heard from a baby elephant but nosy was telling them that he was going to start his own animal band he just had to find a hippopotamus to help him keep the rhythm 
Nosy went to the river, because surely that's where the hippopotamuses were. But when he got to the river, river there was no hippopotamuses at all. Just a big, green, scaly rah, crocodile swimming in the water. Maybe Mr. Crocodile knew where the hippopotamuses went. So, Nosy went to the edge of the water and using his best elephant manners said, But the crocodile just gone. Nosy splashed a little ways into the water and got right in the crocodile's face and said louder, But that's when trouble struck when the crocodile ha! clamped down on Nosy's poor little elephant nose. Nosy tried to pull himself free, but the crocodile would not let go. The animal band was coming to the river for a drink of water, and they heard Nosy's cry, and they saw he was in trouble. So they formed the line, and began to pull on his tail, and they pulled, and they pulled, until finally Nosy's nose shot free from the crocodile's mouth. Nosy had never made a sound like that before, but now he could thanks to his nice, long trunk. <laughs> Nosy loved the sound, and so did Mr. Owl. So that night at the Savannah Talent Show, the hippopotamus kept her rhythm with the foot stomp. Stomp with me. And the gorilla pounded his chest. And Nosy the Elephant was the new trumpet player for Mr. Al's band. And Mr. Al said, hoot hoot. Ah, sweet sweet. And Mr. Al said, hoot hoot. Ah, sweet sweet. And to this very day, all of the elephants that you see all have nice long trunks. Thanks to Nosy the Elephant who had lots of questions, but one day got the wrong answer from the wrong type of animal. So what do we learn from this story today? We learned that young people, it's okay to be curious and ask questions, but make sure you ask a trusted adult, like your parents, your grandparents, your teachers, your uncles, well not your uncles, because your uncles sometimes give you bad advice, but your aunties and other trusted adults to get the right answer that you need. Ah, so a trusted adult, a police officer, a librarian, an adult that you can trust. An adult that you can trust. But there's a message for us not so young people too. Not so young people. Not so young people. Lots of times as parents, we're surrounded by children who have lots of questions. And no matter how tired or busy we are, we have to take time to answer those questions. We have three daughters, and we take them on the road sometimes, and our back seat sounds like a 1950s doo-wop song. Where are we going? When are we getting where? How are we going to get there? And why, 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 why? And no matter how tired we are, we have to stop and answer questions for them. Because if we don't, they might go ask the wrong type of adult, and they might get an answer from a crocodile. So that's the day's story of Nosy the Elephant and how the elephant got his trunk. And that was the end of that. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that story of Nosy the Elephant, the adaptation from Rudyard Kipling. Now, Nosy learned a hard lesson by getting information from a bad source in that crocodile that he was trying to talk to. In today's environment, we're spending a lot of time online in different online forums, chats, and conferences. And there's some good information there and some not so good information there. So what you're saying is that when we're online today, with all of our forums, our chats, our emails, all of these online spaces, we can really get involved in potentially unsafe places. You can get involved in some unsafe places with some people who aren't so great to get information from. And you also might become a, a victim of what we call cyberbullying. Cyber Laquita Marie, what is cyberbullying? Well, you know, cyberbullying is when you use mean messages to uh, be bad to other people on a digital device, whether it's your cell phone, your tablet, your computer, and whether it's a social space or a private website. So let's just say you have your cell phone and you're texting a mean message or you're texting a mean picture. 
commenting on a picture, something bad, you're sending it to someone. Remember, when you hit send, you cannot bring that message back. So cyberbullying is basically a form of being bad to other people online. So whether it's Snapchat, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, creating a website, people have actually created a full-fledged website to be bad to other people. Imagine that. Uh, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube comments, all of those places. If you're leaving a mean comment, that's a form of cyberbullying. All of it's punishable by law, like popo. Yes, you don't want no popo coming knocking at your door. Okay. Now, another way that people cyberbullying, and this is where we get to talk to the grown-ups here. How many of you have ever sent the email in all caps? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Grown-ups actually have learned these lessons already. We know not to bully. We don't, you know, we just don't do that sort of thing. That's like back in our past when we were younger, kids, immature types of folks. Now, how many of you guys really in the workplace you've experienced where someone sent you an email and like three or four lines of the email are in all caps? They might have a angry emoji or a sad emoji or they might be underlined or typed in red that's a form of cyberbullying that can land you in hot water with the human resources department on your job and again you don't want popo knocking at your office dough <laughs> so remember cyberbullying takes place in digital spaces now what should we do if we encounter cyberbullying in these digital places well just like you saw in the story when nosy the elephant was in trouble with that crocodile the uh, Mr. Owl's band, the group, they saw it. They came and stepped right in. You don't want to be a bystander. If you see something, speak up. Being a bystander means you just don't do anything. You pretend that you don't see it. You hope it's going to go away on its own. You might even participate in it. Yeah, actually, that's the worst way. So you don't want to be a bystander where you just don't do anything. You don't want to be that person that kind of joins in and banter back and forth. You actually want to just simply speak up and say, hey guys, um, this is actually bullying. We're cyberbullying. Just announce what it is and don't participate. Just by you announcing it, that's standing up and that actually speaks volumes. So remember, in today's digital spaces, make sure that you're not like nose the elephant. Make sure you're getting good information from reliable sources. And if somebody becomes a crocodile in your digital space, they try to give you bad information or they try to intimidate you through cyberbullying, make sure that you ignore it and that you report it to someone that can give you some help. Just like Mr. Owl and his animal band gave help to Nosy the Elephant when he was in trouble. Thank you for joining us today. Laquita Marie, what can they do? Oh, of course, you can like, you can subscribe, you can let us know your experiences with cyberbullying. Have you experienced that? How did you handle it? That'll help a lot of other people know how to handle their situation. Some people have never been in that situation. Hopefully they won't be. But in the event that they are, it's best to be prepared rather than just hope it never happens or pretend that it's not happening when it does. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody, on this episode of Atupan Entertainment. Have a great day.